Well, good morning, Mercy Vineyard. Welcome to Mercy Online, our new uh, online Sunday morning experience. We're so glad you're here. I'm Julie Badertha, the communications lead here at Mercy, and uh, I'll let Kelly introduce herself. Yeah, and I am Pastor Kelly, the community life pastor. And like Julie said, we are just so excited to tell you a little bit about our new online church experience and what you can expect. There are some really great features that I think you're gonna enjoy. Yeah, absolutely. We we heard in our survey that our, um, our online experience was okay, and so we really wanted to improve on that. And so that's why we've launched this new platform, and it gives you the opportunity to uh, connect with folks in the chat on our online host team and our staff. They'll be participating. You can ask for prayer at any time in a private chat uh, during the service. We'll be posting information about events and opportunities that you can participate in or sermon highlights. Um, so enter into the chat. That's an important way to connect with us during our Mercy Online Sunday experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we would love if you could just even right now enter into the chat uh, and say hello to us. That's how we're gonna know that you're here is by chatting and saying hello. And you'll notice when you're chatting that you your comments come up as a name. So for those of you who are in like the AOL age, anybody else, Julie, yeah. oh, was yeah. that you? you know, Julie like, Bug 1101. <laughs> yep, I was uh, uh, always cold Kelly. <laughs> because I was always cold and needed a blanket or a coat. You know, you don't think about those things when you're making a nickname. So if, like me, when you got to this new church online, uh, Mercy Online, and you were asked for a nickname, you might have chosen something that you don't necessarily want to come, come up as in the comment feed. So if that's you, good news, you can change your name. So just go to your profile. Um, you can upload a picture, which is really helpful to us if you'd like to and you can also just change your name. Um, it's fun if you if you have a fun screen name, that's awesome. If you wanna be known by your name, that's awesome too. But um, just, yeah, make a profile. It'll be, it'll be a lot of fun. And then um, also we are gonna be at this link every single week. So my suggestion to people is to just bookmark this so that it shows up in your browser, browser every week. So you don't have to type in live.mercyveneer.org. So can't wait to see you in coming weeks. We're really excited. Yeah, so chat, say hello, let us know you're here so that we can greet you and uh, and connect with you through the service. Um, so, um, yeah, I, we're, we're doing a little, we're doing things a little bit differently uh, during our Advent season. So each week, a member of Mercy will be sharing a testimony of how God has been working in their life. And then another member will share a scripture with us and, and lead us in lighting our Advent candles. And then following that, we'll have um, we we'll hear a sermon from the Bible and worship together. So it's going to look a little differently uh, during the Advent season, but we're really excited at the opportunity to connect with one another as we observe Advent and see some some new faces on the screen. So I'm excited about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then after the live stream, um, we are still going to be doing our online church cafe. So if you have never joined us for that, what that looks like is there is a Zoom link that's at the top of the page right now. You'll see it in the top bar on our Mercy Online. Um, click on that Zoom call and it will take you to a call at 11 a.m. where Pastor Tommy, Pastor John and Keisha will be there waiting for you to say hello. Um, maybe talk a little bit about the sermon. Like, what were you thinking as you heard Pastor Cassie preaching? And what were some things that come to mind? What are you gonna take into your week? And then also we wanna give people the opportunity to receive face-to-face -face prayer if you would like. So while during our service, you'll be able to get prayer through chat um, by indicating that on the screen right here. Um, after the service, kind of more extended time for prayer and for connection. It's been a really rich time. Yeah. I've been going yeah. the last couple of weeks and every week it's been like whoa god totally showed up yeah. and we weren't expecting that yeah. so we really just invite you to join um also if you are new to mercy another thing that i would like to direct you to at the top of the screen or, or even if you've been coming to mercy for a while is our connect card so at the top of the screen there's another little button that says connect card if you could just take two to three minutes right now to fill out that card and let us know what you are um, what's going on in your life right now let us know how we can be praying for you if you're new, let us know that you'd like some information. There's also a place there for you to sign up to our email list, which is super important during the season because everything is digital, right? So a lot of our really important information that we're sending out to our Mercy community right now is through email. Mm -hmm. So we really encourage you, if you're not on our email list, go to our Connect card, sign up to be on the email list and make sure you're getting those communications. Um, but yeah, super easy. And if you're new, I would love to chat with you as well. So go ahead and put that 
um, in the chat if you would like to. Yeah, we absolutely want to connect with folks, and the best way to do that is to chat in the uh, interactive live stream, to fill out our Connect card, and especially come to our online cafe. Mm -hmm. It's a great way to see you face to face, uh, to get to know you a little bit, and to let you know about some opportunities that you could have to connect into things that we're doing here at Mercy. So we'd really love to see you face to face in this season where it's really hard to see people face to face. Mm -hmm. So the more opportunities that we have to connect, the better. Yeah. So join us there. Yeah. I miss that. All right, so we are going to shift gears a little bit to talking about the best time of year, in my opinion, <laughs> which is Christmas. And regardless of what's going on this season, um, we have a lot to be thankful for, and we have a God that we want to celebrate. And so Julie and I are going to be sharing some things that are going on Christmas and Advent in this um, in the coming weeks. These are also all listed on our website. So at the top of the page, I feel like a broken record, but there's this awesome bookmarks bar. There's also an event tab on there. So anything we're talking about today is going to be in that event tab. Um, so one of my favorite things that we started, I think, four years ago wow. now. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah is our holiday market. And our holiday market is a chance for artisan um, creators and vendors who um, are tied to a really good cause. Um, to share their products with us. It's an opportunity for the Mercy community to shop local, shop small, and shop safe in this mm -hmm. season yep. as we have moved it entirely online. So there is one week left to shop our holiday market. How can you do that, yeah. you might ask? Um, there's a couple ways. On our events page on the website, there are links to our 16 different vendor pages and you will purchase directly from our vendors, but we're just providing you the links there um, so it's easy to get to. Or, and this is my suggestion, if you have Facebook, join our, look on our Mercy Events page, um, find our event for the ho online holiday market, and respond going or interested to that event. Reason being is we have some really great vendor giveaways that have been going on. Even this week in our last week of the holiday market, um, I'm going to be giving away some vendor cash. So $10 where you can spend at the vendor of your choice. Um, and so it just is going to be a, the best way to get information and also see all the vendor products. So please um, shop small, shop local, shop safe, and considering um, maybe skipping some Amazon purchases to shop with some local business who says who could really use the support this season. Yeah, and I noticed Kelly is sporting some mm -hmm. uh, a vendor uh, earrings uh, from Do Designs that you got mm -hmm. through our holiday market. So those are beautiful. Mm -hmm. You'll see, you'll get to see more of that in the, the discussion on our Facebook page or mm -hmm. click on the links to all of those vendors to check it out mm -hmm. uh, and do some shopping this year. We're, we're also um, talking about Advent a lot. We're, we're doing something a little differently this year in that we're observing Advent. Rather than having one big Christmas service, um, we're, we're focusing on the series as leading up to Christmas, uh, waiting and expectation for our coming Savior. And so we really want this to be an opportunity to remind yourself of the wonder of who God is and, and receive from Him. And as we do that, we remind ourselves of, of how we can, we can hope we can uh, prepare, we can find joy and love. And so that's the, 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 the theme of our Advent series this year. You'll see that in the services. You'll see that in uh, the devotionals that we're focusing on. And so we want you to, to come along and participate. And, and we don't want this though to be one more thing where it feels like, oh, I've got to add this to my to-do list. No, um, this is an opportunity where we are showing up before the Lord. We're showing up to God and saying, I, I am ready to receive and, and I want, to just encourage you, if we show up, um, God will come to us and and bring hope and encouragement. I really believe that, and so I encourage you, uh, even in the resistance that might come, of like, oh, I just I'm not sure I'm not sure I want to open this devotional book. I encourage you um, to participate in our services and our devotions during this season. And I, I really believe that you will experience something from the Lord. You will receive something. His name is Emmanuel, God with us. He wants to be with us. And, and so I think um, as we show up, he also shows up. And so come and experience hope and encouragement from God in this season. Mm -hmm. That is so powerful, Julie. And that word hope, that's been resonating in a lot of places and spaces I've been in and conversations I've had. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited that yeah. we're starting today yeah. by talking about hope. Yeah. Um, it's and great. Yeah, the first and the first thing that we have to uh, to do is we want to give a gift to you. Mm -hmm. So we want to have you be a receiver as well. Mm -hmm. So come today. Uh, we hope to see you after the 
uh, the service in the drive-thru in our parking lot to pick up uh, your Advent gifts, the devotional, the candle so that you can follow along, and a recipe for the uh, Christmas cookie experience if you'd like to do that at home. We'd love to have you participate in those things along with us. And I also want to mention, I know, you know, coming to church might not be something, uh, even to, for the drive through might not be something you're, co you're comfortable with. That's just fine. Um, we have a sign up on our website that if you'd like to have uh, these gifts delivered to your home. So sign up there and we have folks that would love to, to drop it off at your home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really hope to see you today in the drive through It's always fun to kind of see people's faces through the masks from afar and to say hello. And it really reminds me that we are part of this greater community mm -hmm. of Mercy Vineyard Church and that we're still connected even though we're distant. Um, same thing, like Julie said, for those of you whom we're gonna deliver to you. It is our honor and our blessing to be able to serve you in that way. So sign up if you, if you need that, but hope to see you today. Yeah. And we'd love to see you virtually as well. And one of the opportunities that we have to do that is with uh, Zoom calls on Wednesday evenings uh, during our Advent series. We, um, we invite you to join these, these Wednesday evening Zoom calls. Um, we have a Milk and Cookies mm -hmm. for Mercy Kids Zoom call at 7 p.m. And, uh, and then a Holiday Hoopla Zoom call with adults at 8 p.m. on Wednesday evenings. And it's an opportunity to, uh, to connect with us. We'll have Mercy staff participating on those calls, uh, ask some questions about how you're experiencing God in this season, uh, where you're experiencing hope and encouragement, and what are some of the things that you celebrate in this season. We want to connect with you, so grab a grab a beverage, grab your eggnog and your cookies. I don't know if you're eggnog mm -hmm. uh, drinkers. I, I love a little holly nog myself. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but uh, be with us on Wednesday evenings on mm -hmm. Zoom. So you'll find those Zoom links on our website, and we'd love to we'd love to see you there. Mm. Great, such such great opportunities. I'm really excited about those, especially as most of us are going to be home a lot in the coming weeks. It gives us something to do. Um, finally, we just want to thank you for your continued giving to support the work of Mercy Vineyard Church. You have been giving generously in this season, and it has allowed us to help families and individuals who have been affected by COVID, as well as put on an awesome drop-in learning center for people in our community. And so thank you so much for that. We are really excited that in coming weeks, we're gonna have more opportunities for you to invest in the kingdom of God and invest in Mercy Vineyard Church through giving. So if you're thinking about end of the year gifts, stay tuned. We have some opportunities for you and um, things to set forth to you. Um, if you would like to give today, there is a give tab at the top of your bar. It'll take you right to the giving. Um, or if you're giving later this week, you can also do that in our app or on our website. But again, thank you so much. You have been so generous in your support and it is seen and it is appreciated. Well, wonderful. We're going to uh, transition now and hear from uh, members of our community as they share their testimony and share uh, scripture with us for the service. So join us in, uh, in celebrating these folks in our community. Hi, my name is Hannah Stark, and I'm just going to talk a little bit about this piece, Petra. And I'm mostly going to read just so I don't fumble over my words, but... Yeah, I just wanted to give you guys some context and share my testimony. So I'm the type of person who thinks a lot about what is going to happen next. I'm a teacher and an artist. I'm an art teacher, actually. Uh, as a teacher, I spend so much of my time thinking about the next thing to do. As an artist, I am a dreamer and a romantic. This season has been challenging because it's very uncertain. My plans have been canceled or modified at best. And honestly, I'm left with the question, what is going to happen next? It's really hard for me to have hope when I cannot see beyond the next Zoom class. As you can imagine, it is very strange to have students who don't even know how tall you are. Uh, it's a struggle to build relationships when they have only seen you from the shoulders up. Sometimes I actually just like stand up on camera and say, look, I have legs. But I digress. When you are faced with a sea of black screens and surely sleeping teenagers, 
everything begins to feel pointless. A quick side note, I want to make a big shout out to parents of teenagers. Uh, it's, it's hard right now. It's hard for our kids. And uh, I just wanted to encourage you and say, I see you and um, uh, just keep, to keep fighting the good fight. And to our teenagers, I see you too. Um, you're amazing and I know it's hard. I know you're sad. We're all so sad. I, uh, I know I am struggling um, with feeling depressed and uh, I, need, I need plans. I need hope to get through life. Timothy Keller actually says it uh, really well. You and I are unavoidably and irredu irreducibly hope-based creatures. We are controlled not by how we live now, but what we think will happen later. We need a living hope to get through life and endure suffering. A living hope enables us to have both sorrow and joy. Our living hope is an inheritance achieved for us by Christ. This piece, Petra, is about the hope we need right now. I love spending time outside. Camping in the wilderness is where I connect the most with God and find rest. This simple animation came from many different moments when camping, uh, particularly in the Boundary Waters. After a long day of paddling and hiking and portaging, uh, you get into camp and it is pouring rain. And all you have to do is light a fire, make food, and crawl into bed. But the rain is preventing you from lighting that fire. There is no birch bark in sight. You are exhausted. You are hangry. You are done. It feels so hopeless. And right now, I am in a season of exhaustion. I am tired and I am trying to light hope, light fires of hope in the storm. However, I am reminded daily by the Holy Spirit, God is our rock and he is our provider. He is also actually our light. The, the inheritance achieved for me by Christ's arrival on earth is my living and sustaining hope. I don't know what tomorrow will bring, but as I made this work, I was challenged to lean into the shelter of the sustainer. May I find rest and comfort in the knowledge of the ultimate plan for my life. I don't need to know what tomorrow will bring. This season is hard, but my hope is eternal. It is a flame that is always lit and will not be put out. Hi, my name is Matt Prue, and I'm going to light the candle of hope and share two scriptures with you this morning. The hope candle reminds us of a time when people were still looking forward to the promise of a Messiah. Isaiah 9, 2 says, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Let's light our candles together and read these words of Jesus from John 8, 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life.
Hey, good morning, Mercy. It is real good to be with you uh, in the Church Online platform. Hopefully you are letting us know who you are getting signed up so we know you're you because we want to talk to you. And so do that. Thank you to Matt Prue for the text for today. We'll get to that in a moment. And thank you to Hannah. Uh, this testimony piece really excites me. I think there's something really powerful about, about the way we witness one another especially in, in dark, harder times, also in good times. I think it's just a function of being uh, one body. And so thank you to her. We'll come back to her piece at the end here too. Uh, how you doing? <laughs> Let me know how you're doing. Uh, we're doing a hope reading, right? A hope reading. And I want to I wanna just tell you, you know, the, the Christian like bit people do where they're like, don't pray for patience, you know, how people do this. <laughs> Funny, funny, and because they're like, God is going to sucker punch you with some circumstances that will just, you know, whatever. Uh, I, I, I normally am kind of like psh, hogwash, which is what my grandma says, uh, about that stuff. And I got to tell you, this week I did it. I prayed not for patience, but I prayed for hope. I was like, if I'm going to talk to people about hope, you got to show me something here. <laughs> you got to show me something. And uh, I have come out of that with two surprising ob- observations. One, I found a lot of that hope in some of the real real hard moments of my last few weeks. The darker places is where I, I met or came face to face with some of that hope. That's supposed to be encouraging. Okay, stay with me. Uh, the second thing, it's always better. It's always better than I think it is when God shows me. And God shows me a piece of himself. A piece of Jesus. That, that always is deeper and richer than I think. And so I want the same for you today. We're going to go to the text. We're going to navigate, uh, navigate some of the the darkness. We're going to walk in the darkness a little bit. Okay, we're going to hear words from the Lord. We're going to we're going to be asked to make a choice with what we're hearing and seeing. And then uh, I'm going to I'm going to offer to you that hope is a powerful motivator. <laughs> a powerful uh, pep in your step, for lack of a better word. It's a powerful go back to life uh, tool. And so I I hope we leave here today with some of that in us. Okay, so I'm going to pray that and then we'll go to the word Holy Spirit. Yeah, all that stuff. Will you come do it in us? Uh, Show us through the text what we are to see, what you have for us. We pray to see you. We pray to hear from you. And so will you come and meet us as we do that? Jesus, we lift you up as our hope, and we praise you for that. And we say thank you that you have uh, made a way. You've made a pathway for us to hope. Amen. All right, folks, here we go. Uh, I'm going to give you a little background from Isaiah 8 because context matters when it comes to hope. You got to feel like it matters. It matters in a lot of ways. With hope, I think it, it is part of the story. I think it's a piece of one pie. And so... Uh, here is here's what's going on in Isaiah 8. It is a bad news, just in general. Real bad, real bad. Uh, Judah, southern kingdom of Judah, northern kingdom of Israel have, are split. Uh, bad leadership, all the, the reasons for that are a whole nother bucket of worms. Uh, but right now, the threat that is on the horizon is Assyria. Assyria is coming at them, and Assyria is going to wipe them out. And like humans do, everybody has different ideas Uh, about how this threat should be handled, okay? And you know how humans also do. Everybody is making enemies out of people who disagree with them. Ugly. It's ugly, okay? Uh, I I want to, I would encourage you to read some of Isaiah 8 on your own. We don't have a ton of time to get into a lot of it, but but like, here's some highlights, okay? Here's highlights from Isaiah 8, what the the Lord is saying to his people. Uh, One, my care for the people of Judah has been like gently flowing waters. God has provided what they needed as they needed it. And then all of a sudden it says, well, if they are rejoicing over the misfortune of King Resident and King King Pekah, who are who are building a coalition to like utilize each other's resources, geographically, politically, super smart move, bad move for Israel, because this is not what God asked them to do. He's like, if that's what they want, that's what they'll get. And I'm going to send a flood of Assyria to cover the land, to overflow it. It's going to be up to its neck. This is the vibe. These are the feelings. He says, huddle together. Okay, and then Isaiah starts starts to kind of uh, to respond. Okay, and I'm going to read. I'll, I'll read from uh, Isaiah 8.11. Isaiah is reading, the Lord has given me a strong warning not to think like everyone else. Don't call everything a conspiracy like they do. Don't live in dread of what frightens them. It says, make the Lord of heaven's armies holy in your life. 
Okay, think about this, the Lord of Heaven's armies. They are they are terrified right now of armies. They are terrified of Assyria's armies. They're terrified of the neighboring countries who, who are in an alliance against them. And the Lord's uh, the Lord's armies, I believe, have, have just simply dropped out of their recognition. They've they've forgotten in some words, uh, in some ways, about about the Lord's armies. Okay, about the way that the Lord functions in this realm. And so he he goes on more doom and gloom, more doom and gloom. Uh, and then I want to read verse seventeen. Okay, Isaiah eight seventeen. This is what Isaiah's choice is. Okay, he's got the bad news. He's got the bad news. He's he's become aware that that we have we have faltered from God's plan for Israel. Isaiah's been the one kind of the actually guy. Actually, guys, God asked us to do, and we're not doing. And so now here the here the trouble comes. And uh, in verse seventeen, Isaiah responds to this. He says, "I will wait for the Lord, who has turned away from the descendants of Jacob. He, he's he's hidden his face. God's face. He's hidden from us." And then it says, I will put my hope in him. I will look for him. I'll look. Yeah, he's hidden. Yeah, it's dark. Yeah, we have made, we have finagled all of these, all of these strategies outside of God's plan for us. And so, so we have, we've been moving ourselves into darkness, right? And in the darkness, things get hidden. This is really beautiful. Uh, He describes this really well. Let's read verse, uh, verse 20. Look to God's instructions and teaching. People who contradict his word are completely in the dark. They'll go from one place to another, weary, they're hungry. And then because they're hungry, they rage and curse their king and their God. Sound like anybody (laughs) you know? All right, because they're weary and hungry, they rage and they curse their king and their God. They look up to heaven, they look down at the earth. Wherever they look, there's trouble and anguish and despair. And so they will be thrown out into the darkness. I mean, doesn't your body just tell you that that's true? <laughs> Isn't that, that's exactly how, how it works, right? We get, we get hangry and then life looks, life looks grim. And then that grim life reality that I am aware of, it does, it always does it. It works its way into my understanding of my own relationship with God, of my own uh, relationship with how to navigate my own life. Things get grim, things get dark. And then my view of God inevitably, inevitably gets darker too. Right? I don't think this is meant to, I think this is just descriptive. Does that not what happens? Is that not what happens, right? We get spiritually hungry and then we're walking in the dark and then all of a sudden God seems so hidden. God seems so far away. Okay, and so then, then this, is, this is where we're at. It's not looking good. And this is the moment, this is the moment where we begin to hear uh, the light. Right, the light starts to speak. Nevertheless, this is Isaiah 9 1. That time of darkness and despair does not go on forever. The land of Zebulun and Naphtali will be humbled, but there will be a time in the future when Galilee of the Gentiles, which lies along the road that runs between the Jordan and the sea, will be filled with glory. Okay, now, uh, I don't know. I don't know. How many times have you heard the uh, future argument out of Christianity, right? <laughs> The future. In the future, things will be bright. In the future, God's kingdom will have his way. And yes, that's all totally true. And and when I'm hangry in the dark, <laughs> that feels really insufficient. Right? It feels really insufficient. And I wonder, right, this this life they were living, this future gloom, they were in doom that they were navigating, right? A series coming at them. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how, how reassuring this would have been for me as a listener. To hear about tomorrow being better. We know this, right? We know this. We, we have our own stories of this. We have national stories of this. We have, we have global stories of this, of, of waiting and how waiting doesn't always seem to cut it. And I, I want to I wanna just, let's go to the text. Let's see what, what is the response uh, of this waiting. How do people respond? Okay, so Isaiah is talking, I'm going to point out, the prophecy that's coming, it's poetic. In, it, in the Hebrew, this is already written uh, in the past tense. Okay, so the version I'm going to read here isn't that. It's, it's written as if it has happened. This is the nature of, of how Hebrew prophecy would be written. Uh, and so I want to read. It says, the people who walk in a darkness will see a great light. All right, this is what they want. God is hidden. I need to, I need to light it up. I need this light to, to move, to do something. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. 
You will enlarge the nation of Israel as people will rejoice. They will rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, like warriors dividing the plunder. Okay, listen to this language. Listen to the kind of language that this is. You'll break the yoke of slavery. You'll lift heavy burdens. You'll break oppressors' rods, just as you did when you destroyed the army of Midian. Who's you, by the way? The boots of the warrior and the uniforms bloodstained by war will all be burned. They'll be fuel for the fire. Think of this language. You see this? I think right now we're, we're, we're painting a picture of hope here, right? Hope does this stuff. Hope breaks yokes. Hope snaps rods of oppressors in half. Hope has bloody boots, right? Think about this. Think, think, right? I just watched Rogue One this week, right? Hope is, is the language of is the rebellions. Rebellions are built on hope, it says, Right? This is what people need. People who are in a dark place need to know that the fighting, the work, that that justice, which requires work, which requires some of this this suffering, is coming. Okay, this is this is what people want. They want things to be put right. And when we live on on this earth, some of the putting right involves pain. It does, and, and I think that that this is speaking to that, and it's speaking to who's doing it. Right, God is the one who's going to do this work. God is the one who's going to do this. And, and now stay with me, right? We're in this military headspace, right? Are you there? And then let's read verse six. Here's how. It says, a child will be born. A child will be born, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He'll rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of Heaven's armies will make this happen. A baby. A baby, right? This is, this is, if I'm, if I'm 700 years before Jesus and I hear this read to me, I am probably thinking, I am probably thinking that this is, this is just going to be the next king, the one we're waiting for, the one who will get it right, the one who will stop entangling us in bad alliances, who will stop making choices that, that use us up as people. I'm thinking a king is coming, okay? And uh, a baby to me, okay, <laughs> I'm thinking I'm going to wait a generation and then this king will show up, will grow up, and we'll have the king that we need. And you know the story. 700 years before Jesus. 700 years. And I'm thinking that when Isaiah is speaking this, and and he's speaking this as if it's happened in the past tense, Isaiah has made a choice. He made a choice to see an invisible reality that he was only experiencing via the words of God, right? He was not experiencing this in his every day. He was not experiencing, he was not a soldier, right? Isaiah was experiencing this promise from God and he spoke it and he leaned into it. And this is where the remnant of Israel, the people who choose to believe that the invisible reality is more fundamental than the one that they're looking at in their eyes, with the ears that hear and the eyes that see, all of those things, they believed that there's something deeper coming. And then... 700 years. Okay, and if that makes you mad, uh, which it kind of does to me, I like to remember this Jesus has been born, right? This Jesus is alive. This Jesus swallowed death up in victory. And how much do I let that Jesus have access to my my day right now? Because he has come and gone and it will come again, right? Like this, the space that we are living in, if any, if any like angst about this 700 year wait is in you, we, we ignore it. <laughs> we ignore it in large part waiting for, for a future. And, and Jesus has been here and has beaten death. And, and the, the invitation is to do something about it right now. And I think that invitation to do something about it right now to, to beat death in our own lives, in our own cities, in our own homes. That's hope. That's what hope looks like. Come on, Ted Loader, Ted Loader on hope. We get the proof that a, that a power at work is out there, that God is out there in living hope. Enough to make a difference, right? Because we believe that, that this other power out there can use our mustard seed faith and efforts for his or her own purposes. Right? We are free to work for justice as we understand it, to be compassionate, to love our neighbors, to love our enemies, to sacrifice something big for something true and just. This is what keeps us free in the face of fear. Of fear. This is what keeps us wildly, irresponsibly, creatively, joyfully hopeful. Right? 
this this Jesus that Isaiah could see only in his mind, only through hearing the word of God. This Jesus we get to see through the through the New Testament. This Holy Spirit we get to experience in our own selves, in our own bodies, in our own minds, in our own in our own power, in our own ability to hear and see. And this Holy Spirit, right? I want to read some of these. This is the wonderful counselor. Right? We fight, we fight for this. We fight for a counselor to come and be real to us right now. We, we have the benefit of being on the other side of this history. And I, my question is, do we act like it? When I look at my reality and God seems hidden, that's hopelessness. When I'm not sure that my work matters, when I'm not sure that, that the good I'm doing, that the justice I'm fighting for does anything, that's hopelessness that I am insufficient or that, that I am meaningless, that this life is meaningless, that's hopelessness. And when I say I hope, what I mean is that I have some confidence that, that this word spoken to Isaiah is also spoken to me, that this Holy Spirit that inhabits me means what I do matters because I'm building a kingdom that is, that is right here, right now. Hope gives us the, the, the next steps, right? Hope sees the kingdom as it should be. And it says Jesus has already come, has already defeated death. So I can do what I need to do today to make that reality happen. Right? Hope is what drives people to get up and try things. Hope is what gets you in the car to go to your job at the hospital. Hope uh, puts on PPE and then it, it sits with people who are suffering because we know that there's a Jesus who meets us right there. Hope gets you on that seventh Zoom call, right? As you're making, as you're making a way for your job, hope uh, fills out that, that unemployment paperwork because it's not the end of our story, right? Isaiah knew that there was a story that he, he didn't get to see the whole picture of. He took the word of God at its value. He chose to make that invisible reality work in his life. And then he, he, experienced, he experienced the confidence to keep doing the work of God in his daily moment. And this is, this is what kind of God Jesus is, right? I am the light of the world, he says. I am the light of the world. I am the hope. I am a mighty God, an everlasting father, a prince of peace, right? This is the God who calls himself a resurrection and a life, that he already beat the death, he already beat the hard things, and now he makes a way for our abundant life. We have the new read, right? We have a new read. We have a new way to look at our reality around us. We have a pathway to do it. We can stop forming alliances with other kingdoms. We can have hope. Okay, so um, we're going to move into a time of worship, and I want to encourage you as we do that. Uh, where? Where do you need to meet this, this Jesus, the one who already came, the one who already defeated death? Which areas of your life are you running on, on your own energy? Are you running on your own understanding, right? God is the one who led Isaiah and his people through this season of suffering. God did it. Where do you need to hand some things off to God? Where does your hope lie in your own ability? And that will fall, that'll run out, right? That'll run out and they'll be empty and then you will be empty. And so I would say as we go to worship, look for those things. Ask the Holy Spirit about what those things are. Okay, uh, I also, uh, I'll be back to do communion with you. So if you want to gather some elements, you can do that too. And now we welcome up Amy and the worship team. Come thou long expected Jesus Born to set thy people free From
gracious kingdom bring by thine own eternal spirit rule in all our hearts alone by thine own sufficient
mercy it's time for us to take communion together now okay so hopefully you gathered some elements uh we do this to remind ourselves that uh, we are saying yes to the way that the, the kingdom of heaven meets us in our earthly bodies and our earthly reality and that that is how jesus how jesus came to us and say so, so we say yes to the grace he offers and yes to the nourishment he offers us all right let's read from first corinthians 11 it says, on the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it, gave it to his disciples. He said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do it in remembrance of me. And so we'll take the bread together. And 
And after supper, he took the cup of wine, he gave thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink, this is my blood of a new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so we'll drink together. And Holy Spirit, we say yes to all the grace you have for us, all the hope, all the joy. We want to be people who, who embody the reality of what you've done, of your death, of your resurrection, and your new life. Amen. Thanks so much for being with us. It is good to see you. You can, you can chat with us for a few more minutes in church online, or you can head to the online Zoom if you want to connect with people and pray uh, over video. That'd be awesome. And then I hope to see as many of you as I can at the drive through to get your Advent gifts. All right, so come out for that. Thank you so much for being with here. God bless.